Hi, I'm Sarah Henson. I'm an email copywriter and strategist, and I'm a self-confessed tech geek. Um, today in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit behind the scenes on how I'm write my welcome sequence. This is going to be a bit of a scrappy video because I'm not even sure how it's all going to work out and how I'm going to put it together in the end. I think it would be best if we do the quick overview of how I will be writing this uh, and then you can uh, continue watching to see how I actually do the writing if you want to. Okay, so let's get started. Um, a welcome sequence, just quick overview, is when someone opts into your um, website or your email list, basically they're opting in to either come onto your newsletter or to get a discount code for your products or a lead magnet. Um, if you're in e-commerce, you'll be probably doing a discount code or some other relevant um, uh, opt-in for your products. If you're in uh, digital marketing, you'll be doing a lead mag, much like lead magnet much like this so when people click this want to boost your emails uh, they can add their email address and name and they'll receive the download for how to boost their emails and then after that i want them to automatically go into a welcome sequence just to kind of warm them up to to kind of introduce myself a little bit um and so what i'll do i'll I'll link how to create, um, I've done a couple of posts on how to add your opt-in forms into your Squarespace website. So I'll link that in the blog post um, and the description below. But let's get into the welcome sequence, okay? So what we have to first think about is what is the purpose of the welcome sequence? Um, mostly it is that whole warming up of your subscribers so they understand who you are because you never know where these people are coming from. They could have just clicked on a random pin in Pinterest and saw um, a really exciting lead magnet or discount code that they want to um, get hold of. And so they opt into your email list and maybe they want to, they don't really know anything about you. So you need to introduce yourself. Um, also, you want to actually have a bit of a, a strategy behind it from your point of view of what can you get out of the welcome sequence? For me, I've decided that I also want to learn a little bit about my, my subscriber. So I may ask a question of who they are because I have um, a variety of different people who opt into my email list. Um, the work that I do as in writing emails, I write emails for e-commerce businesses in the natural living space, um, sustainability, ethical and health and wellness. Um, the content that I create are for beginner e-commerce uh, people and digital marketers so that they can understand how to work better with their emails, write better emails, make the tech cap and write better copy, or to make more sales, basically. So, and also just because of the circles that I move in, I tend to uh, attract some copywriters as well. So I have a mix of these people on my list. So it's always good to be able to find out who they are and be able to tag them and segment them. And I've got more um, blog posts about segmenting on my website, on my blogs. So that will be the purpose of my thing is to introduce myself and also find out more about them. Um, what I always think is a good, what, a good thing to consider is how can you be memorable in your, um, in your welcome sequence? Welcome sequences can be as long as you like. I'm actually going to just go through a little bit in a minute on my old welcome sequence, which I actually turned off due to a lot of um, world events that were going on. It just felt really out of touch. So I turned it off and I've not had a, a welcome sequence for about six months. So this is why I'm writing a new one. Um, I want this one to be quite a short one because I'm intending to have some more funnels in my business as in um, people will opt into a variety of different things and they will go through a journey that is specific to what they've opted in for so the welcome sequence doesn't need to be 
um, too specific in terms of a product or anything. And that's what I'm going to get on to in a minute with uh, what is the offer. But I want to be memorable in those first three or four emails that I sent. And they're going to come quite close together. The sequencing that I'm going to do is probably one every day, just so that when someone comes on the email list, they're going to know who I am. So what do I want to be um known for i want to be known for emails i mean i'm an email copywriter but i also really enjoy the tech side of it so connecting all the tech and making that all happen so um and being a copywriter a short form email copywriter that's what i want to be known for but also i have got um a little bit oh, you know there's some things about me that i want people to know about because i'm you know, I'm a person, I'm not just some random marketer. And I have some interests. I, I enjoy pole dancing. Um, <laughs> I also have a bit of a penchant for Lego. As you'll see, if I go back on my website and go to my blog, you'll see all my blog posts have got these little Lego um, images. So I want and that is kind of like my little motif as such. I, I want people to know that that's when they see uh, an image with Lego um, in these colors, these bright pink, uh, purpley pink and yellow images. I want them to think of me. So I want to be known for emails. I want to be known for my Lego images. Um, I also used to be an actress, so I kind of want to drop that in as well, because that's really relevant to how I write my emails is that I step into character as i did when i was an actress i step into the character of my client and my clients customers to really understand what their motivations are their beliefs are around what they're buying and everything so i want that to be uh, a, a part of my welcome sequence so i want to mention that as well so i want those things to be very memorable so i'm going to inc incorporate them within my welcome sequence now if you don't have any funnel set up, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about with a funnel, I, I'll link a, um, another blog post that I did about what a funnel is and what that means in terms of um, your customer journey and everything. So previously, all right, this is my previous welcome sequence. As you can see, I had about eight different emails. Um, first of all was my the actual delivery email of my opt-in and then I, I had a, um, a whole sequence of eight emails that went over out over about two, uh, two weeks. But what I wanted to do with that was to sell my services as a copywriter to write emails for um, brands, uh, e-commerce brands and entrepreneurs. However, now I, I I'm in a position where I um, have several retainer clients who um, take up the majority of my time and I'm setting myself up to create more content and create digital products. So my intent with um, my email sequence isn't to sell my services. I, I'm actually trying to let go of taking on too many projects because when I'm working on other people's businesses, I'm not working on my own. So my purpose and my, my offer isn't going to be my services. The only way that I'll be offering anyone to work with me is in a copy intensive, which is, um, you know, a, a couple of hours of calls and strategy, strategy session and, um, editing sessions. So that's pretty much the only way I'm going to be working with people going forwards. Um, those people who actually are new to me and come on my email list. So I may mention my copy intensive. Perhaps, I'm not sure yet. Um, but then I will later actually have funnels where, where people opt into a specific thing and they will get offered uh, a paid product later down the line. This is not something I've got set up just yet. So if you're going to be like, you know, part of my community for um, uh, a while, you may see this grow and develop as I move forward. So uh, let me, it helps if I write properly. Um, so for now, the welcome sequence will mainly be getting to know me, getting to know them and making what I do memorable in some way. Now, also, the logistics of this is one of the questions that I get asked is, um, should you keep people in a welcome sequence before, you know, 
allowing them to receive your regular broadcast emails and your broadcast emails are the ones that you send each week or each month or whatever it is your um you've decided is your consistent uh email that you send out or emails i currently send one email a week i'm going to be upping that um soon as i as i create more content so the logistics with this i that's this is one of the reasons why i've decided that i want a very short welcome sequence i want them to go through the welcome sequence first and if they come onto my list in a different way later down the line, they won't go through this welcome sequence. They'll have already been tagged with having received the welcome sequence. They know who I am. They know that I'm memorable for emails and seeing my Lego images and the fact that I use my acting experience as part of this, um, uh, part of how I write. Um, and so I want them to know that about me but they don't need to see those emails every time they opt in for something something new on my list especially if i'm going to have several funnels that are going to lead people down this this road however you've got to think about if someone is coming into a funnel later will they get the welcome sequence before they go into the funnel so will i hold them back from broadcast emails will i hold them back from other um uh, other funnel emails before they see my welcome sequence. That's something we have to consider. For now, at the moment, I don't have any funnels set up. Um, that's something, like I say, that I'm going to um, put in place at a later date. So at the moment, I'm gonna have people go through my welcome sequence and then they will get dropped into my main list to receive broadcast emails. So I want them to have three days of email. So this is why I wanna keep it short. So I'm gonna try and keep it to three emails. So that's gonna be quite difficult because I've got an idea of what I wanna do with that. Okay, so I'm going to um, pause this for now and then I'm gonna come back with another video that's gonna be edited in uh, with me just planning out my, my emails. So with this logistics one, I'm going to say, um, receive welcome emails then into broadcasts and the thing is you don't have to do this you can have a welcome sequence that kind of drips out over a couple of days and they still receive your broadcast emails the the choice is yours and that's a, a post that i'll be um creating at some point okay i'll see you in the next video okay let's get into um kind of just framing the emails that I'm going to write. As you see, I've just put out email one, two, three. I've put an extra one down here for, I may write another one, I'm not sure about that yet. Um, as you can tell, this is, like I said, a scrappy video where I'm just kind of going with the flow and hopefully you'll keep, keep up with this. So um, in my previous email sequence, um, I, it was kind of like a well, the first one was a welcome email, just telling people a bit about me, especially kind of how I went from actress to copywriter. I'll tell you that in my next email. So that's kind of preempting the second email that goes out. And then I go into why I do this. Now, at the time, I felt like that's a, a very big aspect of what I do is that I'm very passionate about natural living. And because I wanted um, my email sequence at that time was geared very much towards getting uh, new clients for me to write email sequences. That was very important to me to tell people. But right now, in terms of what I want my uh, welcome sequence to do and what I'm offering people at the moment, I feel that that's really kind of quite irrelevant. So I'm not going to go into that as much as I am very passionate about natural living and all of that ethical living, kindness and everything. I mean, that's the whole point of me um, having my podcast. If you didn't know, I had that as the business of universal kindness, where I interview e-commerce business owners in that field. And um, so although that's very important to me, um, one of the things you've got to remember with when you're writing copy is what's in it for them, as in that's the question that's in the mind of your reader. They're going to be asking themselves, oh, that's all very well, Sarah. It's great that you're into natural living, but what's in it for me? You know, so I've got to communicate that I can help them write better emails, basically. Uh, so this one is going to be about what I can help them do, which is write better emails, write, write better emails that convert. 
I've got a, a good record of good open rates for clients and conversions and sales, which is the most important thing. Open rates and um, click-through rates are great if you've got great numbers like that and metrics, but if it's not converting to sales, that's not really the point. The whole point of sending emails is to get sales and it doesn't have to be salesy, that's the thing. Right, so what can I can help them do? So who am I? Um, Sarah, email copywriter and strategist. Um, but mission driven e commerce. I help emails. Okay, um, the this is not the copy that i'm going to use this is just kind of the uh, overview of what i'm going to do what can help them with write better emails what can they expect um uh, emails a week with more sales through email marketing without fees. This is say sleaze without the sleaze because it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, so I will then do that and then I'll put in a PS. Did you get a copy of my boost your emails? So in the moment my boost your emails that's the um, opt-in that I have. I want they will have confirmed their in um, their email address with an incentive email sent from ConvertKit. They click the button and then they get the boost their email the emails but um I want to, just in case, lay further down the line, um, someone opts in through a different method. I still want them to get this. So I'm going to just put a link in. Um, so that they've got access to that. Um, that's the little. Oh, and I'm going to just quickly. Convert. Okay, this is one of my favorite tools. It just take turns. It turns your copy from capitals into lowercase. Okay, so that will be a direct link to. The actual file that I'll have in my Google folder. Okay, so that is email one frames. I will get into writing that in a bit. Now, email two, I want to probably either give them another freebie that I have. I've got an email checklist, uh, which is kind of like everything to tick off before you send your email. So to make sure that it's all on point. For example, writing to one person, um, you're using the same pronoun in your email for yourself. You're not saying we and then I and then we and then I in various different forms. So a variety of different things like that, that you can quickly sweep through your email and um, make sure that it's all on point and things like that. So that's a really valuable thing because all those little tweaks make a difference. Um, so I wanna make sure that they get that. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that as my second email. I would like to send them also some blog posts that I've got that I think will be um, relevant to them. But uh, I think I'd like to right now on the second one is find out a little bit more about them so find out more about them 
them who, rather than asking them who they are, because sometimes people don't like to say that, it reveals a little bit too much about them. I mean, I know that I'm like that. I don't like to click links and say who I am, because sometimes it's not actually relevant to who I am. I ask them what they're interested in. Uh, so, email strategies, copy techniques, um, tech that makes it happen. No, I'm not going to do that. Because what I can do on my next email, if I give send them some blog posts, I can actually tag them with what interests them the most. So I don't need to ask them that question. So maybe I will ask them who they are. So I can send you the most relevant information in mind. Letting me know a little bit about you. No, actually, that's something I'm going to ask them, but I'm going to also put in me there. I've got another freebie for you. That's how I you'll love all about emails so I know that many people have trouble it looks like I'm actually writing these emails now which I'm not this is just trying to get the the idea out of my head I'm all about emails so I know that many people and um, I'm all about emails I've already told you that I'm a bit of a geek about it and could talk all day long. This is all going to change. So. these knees I don't know if that's it's not something I generally say the bees knees but I want to put the personality in there that'll change I know that many people have trouble knowing how to perfect an email so I've got a checklist for you do, don't want too many exclamation marks. I do tend to put them in quite a lot, but I uh, edit those out to perfect an email. So I do love autocorrect. So I've got a checklist for you. This yes. will be something you can refer to over and over again because it has everything you need to make sure your email copy is on point meaning more opens more clicks and most importantly sales now there's a checklist here I might put that one in my form. I okay the third one's gonna be some blog posts
Okay, so in the first one, I'm also going to go into who am I? Da -da -da. Things you need to know about me. Emails, Lego, no, actress, Lego. Now, that's about me, and I'm not sure whether that's actually relevant, the actress piece. We'll see. The, I know you might think the Lego's not relevant, but I want, like I said at the top of this video, I want people to know me for Lego, for my Lego images, um, so that I'm recognisable. People will always think, oh, that's Sarah, because they see a Lego image. The actress thing, it's funny, uh, that was really important piece of my marketing when I was creating content around getting uh, selling my services because that's how I write my emails I, I step into the the role of a of the client or the customer to understand them better um as an educator and a content creator I'm not sure how valuable that is for them for people to know so maybe I'll just uh, I might just add that at the end of that list just because, you know, it's kind of cool. I had a part on Emmerdale at one point. If you know what Emmerdale is, it's a UK British soap, teeny tiny role. But maybe I want to add in that just as a little, um, hey, this is who I am, bit of a fun thing. So that's kind of that's yeah so okay email one is introducing me email two is kind of just giving a bit more um value in what i i'm providing uh it's also solidifying the fact that i'm all about emails because i've got this email checklist because the the if they've got the boost your emails then that will be relevant to them as well because they've opted in to get boost your emails. The email checklist will be relevant to whoever they are, whether they are a copywriter or a e-commerce business owner or a digital marketer, online business owner, any of those, the checklist will be relevant as will boost your emails. Um, the only thing with this email here I'm looking at is if later down the line i do have the email checklist as an opt-in then they will have already had that as an incentive and this copy might not be relevant to that so but i'm going to keep that for now because at the moment i've got my booster emails as my main opt-in you see this is the thing is like when you really kind of go into the strategy of it you can go down rabbit holes of like trying to think of this is the thing is like thinking of your customer journey and all the potentials that can happen. Um, but it's, it's very easy to overcomplicate things. So I try to keep it as simple as possible for now. I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to give them that checklist. Okay. So this one is going to be about some blog posts that you think about what blog, blog posts might be relevant to them so I think what's the double opt-in is quite a good one so maybe I need to this is the thing is like I need to consider the three aspects because if as you see this is where emails copy and tech collide they're the three things i do emails copywriting and um my tech geekery as i said at the top of this video so maybe i need to put uh one of each of those in oh top 10 top five tools for writing emails maybe that one why you need a welcome sequence <laughs> that's kind of 
quite meta since this video is about writing my welcome sequence. Uh, I used to use this one, why use email marketing? Because I was trying to convince people, not convince people, but um, use persuasion of like why it's so important to have an email sequence and things like that. It's not relevant for this particular sequence that I'm writing. That's the funnel one I was talking about earlier. So I think my worst subject lines ever. I think that was a pretty good one. Worst subject lines ever. Let's put that one in. Oh. Um, I think the double opt-in is a bit more of a, is a bit of a techie thing. But it is about email strategy. But I do think it's something that people might wonder whether they need to have it. I was going to put three in, but I might put four in. Best copywriting I, advice I ever received. That's definitely all about copywriting, which is fantastic. Um, just in case you really want to know, it's this. That's the best advice I had from a guy called Kevin Rogers of Copy Chief. The first draft. Go read it. Now, mainly my tech stuff is on my videos on my YouTube channel, which do have blogs on here, but I might not put any tech in there. Uh, email personalization, I like that one. Let's put that one in there as well. How many have we got? Four. Usually, we like to do the power of three, how three things do. But sometimes, you know what? It's really good to know the rules to break the rules. So I may put four in. You may see later that I'll delete one or something. Okay, so emails, baby. Let's get you up to speed. Um, um, you might need to know to help you. Hello, help you master your email marketing strategy. Uh, some of my best posts for you. Okay. So basically that's me doing that. So worst subject line, what's the double opt-in, best advice, email personalization. Okay, so I I do want to know who they are. The thing is I think I might send this a week later. And actually I might have this as like a separate follow-up email so this is my welcome sequence three emails so once they're in the email sequence which is the the first three emails they are held back from the broadcast emails then because i don't want people to be in a really long welcome sequence for too long like you know a couple of weeks before they start getting broadcast emails so i might use this one uh, email four is the start of a start of a nurture sequence so that when people come out of the welcome sequence they go into a nurture sequence which I can then also what I will do after this is add on popular emails because I go through this is one of the things um, like this worst email subject lines I go through um, some of my really badly performing email subject lines but also some of the really good ones and the ones that perform well that get a lot of opens get a lot of clicks um, like I say it's usually the sales that you want to look out for at the moment I don't have digital products or any products as an e-commerce um, business owner 
to sell. So it was always my services. So this, my emails were mostly about getting to know me and getting, you know, the whole no like, and trust factor um, so that people would, you know, inquire about me writing their emails. What I found actually mostly is that my clients have usually come from referrals. Anyway, so in this one, I go through some of the good ones. And so what I might do, because those emails have already gone out, they were broadcast emails, they had a moment of a life, and then they've gone. So what I might do is go scour through those and then just add on some of the popular emails. And I'll keep doing that as email as I send emails out for some of my blog posts, I might add them on and have this as like a a nurture sequence that is once a week on a Saturday, maybe that goes out so that people are, although they get my broadcast emails, they also get this sequence where they can read some of my previous emails that I know that performed well. Um, and then at some point when I've created some of my products, I can then drip in uh, links to those products in these emails because I know they've converted well in terms of open rates and click-through rates. So that's what I'm going to do. That one is going to be telling me uh, this is where I ask them who they are so I can kind of put them into buckets. Sorry, that's a very northern way of saying that. Buckets. Buckets. Uh, and when I say a bucket, it's, um, you know, segmenting my list into who they are. That's what I'm going to do for that one. And this one, I don't think I'm actually going to write right now. Uh, okay, so that's my welcome sequence. It's not finished. Okay, and hopefully you get an idea of how to write your welcome sequence, whether you're an online business owner, whether you're an e-commerce products um, business. For uh, an e-commerce thing, you, you might... You will want to write in the first one, you want to write a bit about you and your mission about why you create your products. Um, and of obviously, always in, in that case, if you've got a shop with lots of products and you need to link out to your your products and say, here's that. So in the second one, you might want to say, OK, this for this one, I'm, I'm giving another freebie. Maybe you want to give some value about why, you know, some information about what makes you unique in terms of your products? Um, what is different? The the main message behind your business of what what's unique, and then another link out to your shop page, and then maybe you do have some blog posts about um, whether you know if you're a skincare uh, producer, then you maybe have some blog posts about the ingredients that you use and why they're so important, or if you're um, if you're selling handmade products that you make at home, maybe um, you want to show your process so that people can see how different it is to have a handmade product as opposed to a mass made product from China or something like that. So those are the things you've got to consider as a welcome sequence, telling them a bit more about you, really getting them on board with your mission. Um, and if you can, um, drip out any kind of content that they can click to where you will be able to tag them with the their behavior as in the thing that has interested them rather than um, just some random content. I hope that makes sense. Give me a shout out if you uh, have any questions about this. Send me an email hello at sarahhenson.co.uk and I'll get back to you on that if you need some help. And I may put out a, another blog post about the things you need to include in your welcome sequence. Okay, so I'm back. I've written my emails and I'm just going to quickly um, scan through them just to give you an idea of um, what I've put in there. Just to put a bit of personality in and also the reasons why certain things are in there. Okay, so when I write my emails, I generally write the email first and then I do the subject line because... I never know what I'm going to write before I write them. And sometimes I like to reference something that I mention in the email uh, as part of the subject line. Um, so in this first email, it's um, the first email they receive after getting their opt-in that they receive from me. So it's kind of a welcome one. So it's welcome to my part of the world. Thanks for signing up to receive emails from me. Welcome to my part of the world. Although I guess it's your part of the world since I'm in your inbox, right? So that's just like a little bit of a, a joke. 
Uh, and this is where I go into why email is so amazing. Okay, so I'm guessing you love email. My mission is to love make you love email is because it's not scary and it's a very and this fits the piece um, that you know I didn't know I was going to write this until I wrote it. And it's a very generous lo lover, if I might add. Sorry if that's a little bit too intimate for our first date. Okay, so what I'm getting at is the fact that email can be um, a great revenue um, booster. Well create a lot of revenue in your business. And then I go at this point, I go into um, the fact that I've helped um, e-commerce companies generate tons of revenue with their email marketing. Um, uh, and that basically positions me as an expert, you know, it shows that I've got results for um, eight figure businesses. Uh, and so this little aside here, sorry if that's too intimate for the first date, because I say it's a very, gen very generous lover. I'm obviously not talking about a real lover, um, but that's what I um, reference in my subject line because I say three things you should know about. Sorry, it's three things you should know, which is what I go into here. If you remember in my framework, I said I want to be known for these things. OK, so those three things you should know about. The pre header is what you can see just after the subject line. And um, this is where I reference first days can be a little little nerve wracking, but I'm sharing some intimate details here. The intimate detail is this. And because I already put intimate detail, this is kind of closing the loop. There's a, the intimate detail there, and I repeat intimate there. Um, but also this pre-header, um, because I'm sharing intimate details, it gives a little bit of um, curiosity there for people to open the email. And the thing is, like this is what I write, but I have no idea how it will perform. Um, so it may be a case of um, setting it up and letting it go and seeing how it performs and then changing things over if and when I need to. So then I go into a little bit about who I am. You know, email is my thing and I want people to reply to my emails. Another good thing, getting people to reply to you. It also, um, it tells the email platforms like Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, and all of that, it's, if people are replying to emails, it gives them, it gives them a signal that you are trustworthy. So it's, it's kind of like an engagement um, process so that your emails are flagged as friendly and good because people are replying as opposed to marking you as spam or something like that. Um, so I go into email, bit of Lego, thing about the acting, uh, and then I just kind of state what it is I do and how I can help people. So, and I um, entice them that I will be giving them a freebie tomorrow. Something exciting is coming out tomorrow. And then this is another engagement thing. It's like, let me know a random fact about you. Here's two of mine. I was on a roll on Emmerdale and I love to pole dance. And then obviously in the PS, um, it says, did you get a copy of the Booster Emails guide? It's cool. So let's put that in. And then I'm going to link to that there. And then email two will be the next day. Again, this was subject line was written after I wrote the email. So this is a really, really quick one. And basically, I have an email checklist I want to give them to. So it says, again, I'm reiterating that I'm all about emails. I want to be known for emails. So I'm all about emails. In fact, I'm a I'm a real geek, in fact, and I could talk all day long about why you should use email marketing, why you should have an automation sequence, yada, yada. But right now you might be wondering how to write a good email. So for that reason, I have a check. I've got a checklist for you. Use this when you write your email so you can sweep through your email and tick off each box to make sure it's proofed and ready to convert. And just to um, communicate exactly what conversion is, because, you know, I'm talking to people who um, are just at the beginning of the journey. This means more opens, more clicks, and more importantly, more sales. So they can download the checklist here. And as you see, these emails are um, geared towards what I do, and they're all tied in together. So if someone's opted in to boost your emails, they're going to be wanting to know about emails. I'm an email copywriter and a strategist. I can help them with that. So it all ties together with what I'm giving them here with the email checklist. And so with that, I wrote this email subject line, how to write a damn good email. And just as a pre-header, the sweep to do before you click send on your email. Just in case you're wondering, sometimes I do capitalize my front, uh, my first subject line. And on here, you'll see three 
three things you should know. I, I, I interchange them a lot. It's not a typo. I like to just see what happens with things like that. They're a little bit more intimate when they don't have capital letters. Uh, and then I'll be back tomorrow with something else that will help you master your emails. Again, making them wait for another email. And of course, you saw in my framework earlier that I'm pointing to some blog posts. I decided to just do three in the end. So I'm just saying, feast your eyes on this. This is what you need to take your emails marketing up a notch. Uh, I did originally put take your email marketing to the next level, but that's something that um, I hear all the time, take yourself to the next level. And it's just done to death. So I'm like taking it up a notch. It's like, it makes it sound very simple. So I want people to just read these blog posts. So emails, baby, let's get you up to speed on some of the things you might need to know to help you master your email marketing strategy. And of course, marvel at my beautiful Lego imagery, because I'm pointing them to my blog posts, which have my Lego images. And again, I'm kind of reinforcing that whole thing of like what I want to be known for and how to recognize what I you know who I am if you come across one of my pins on Pinterest you might you know you'll go ah that's Sarah's because I have that Lego imagery so I've written like a little bit of a um a enticing bullet point as such to um, get people to click through. So subject lines, ah, how do you write a decent subject line? Well, check this out to see what didn't work for me and what I do instead now. And so I'm gonna link, that's just for me to link in. I'm not actually leaving that in the body of the email. Uh, although I might do that, I don't know. I'll see later, but um, this is where I would link it where I've uh, underlined. Let's make emails as simple as possible. I know you've heard of double opt-ins, but what are the pros and cons of using them? There's one thing that might be tripping you up. Um, in fact, uh, that's the um, uh, something to do with GDPR. Okay, that might be tripping. But the fact that I don't mention what it is creates a bit of curiosity and we say find out more here. And I'll link that out. And then while email is my true love, my first love was copywriting. I once got into a relationship with a husky voice man who is big in the online space. And he shared a revelationary piece of advice with me about copywriting that I'm about to impart on you here. And that's where I talk about the, um, the shitty first draft. Okay. Um, I didn't get into a relationship with Kevin Rogers, just so you know. But um, what I meant was that, you know, any kind of, um, connection you have with someone is a relationship of sorts. So in my PS, I just say that relationship ship I talk about, the guy with the voice, I merely joined his community. Do you know who I'm talking about? Again, just reinforcing kind of like the curious curiosity piece on that, really. Um, so you see, uh, and then I go into just like, uh, what do you struggle when it comes to emails? I want to engage people again to just um, get people responding to my emails. Um, and that will be it. That's just a really, really simple thing just to really get people on board with who I am and what I do. Uh, and then because I have committed to a consistent email um, send out each week, which will increase over the next uh, few months as well, it primes people to look out for my emails and open them. So what I'm going to do is set them up in ConvertKit and then press play and see how they get on. And maybe I will do another video of how they've been performing um, later down the line. We'll see, you know, who's clicking through. And I can possibly, you know, tag people for what they're clicking through to. Um, seeing what they're more interested in. And then again, I'm going to at some point write this nurture sequence where I get a little bit more information about who they are, as in, are you a copywriter? Are you an e-commerce business owner? Are you an online business owner, um, marketing, whatever, just to find out a bit more about who's coming onto my email list. And then I'll go, like I said, and put some more emails in there that have performed well. Okay. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. If you want to keep updated with all my tips, tricks and hacks that I share on this uh, channel, then be sure to hit subscribe and the little bell button so you're notified of all the uh, videos that I do. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.